friends, it is May the 13th, 2024, and today I want to talk about a topic that um, I think is uh, rather important, um, and I haven't made a video about uh, this topic in quite some time. It's, it's actually been, I think, a couple months since I've talked about this, but um, I, I think that I'm, I'm going to try to start remaking some of my older videos, some of the original ones I did, because there's some really important information in some of those uh, videos I did at the beginning. Um, but with all the new subscribers to this channel now, uh, I know not everyone's going to go back and go through. Because I think at this point, there's like 170 videos or something like it. There's a lot of videos up there now. And, uh, you know, I've been doing these every single day now since um, December. And, uh, like I said, there's a bunch of videos from way back when um, that, you know, I just didn't uh, do the best job with. And, you know, like I said as well, there's so many new people to this channel. Um, and I get a lot of questions every single day uh, of stuff that I've made videos about in the past, but I, I figured why not go ahead and try remaking some of these videos. And the video I want to talk about today is some of the uh, symptoms that I had that I ignored um, before I found out my diagnosis, before I, you know, before I ended up in the hospital for the first time and actually was diagnosed with these certain things. Um, but in today's video, I'm going to keep it rather short. I'm just going to go over these uh, these things, this list that I have here of just some specific stuff that happened to me. Um, and, and a lot of the stuff that I'm going to talk about today it, it, it was like a continuous thing. And I just kept ignoring it, putting it off, uh, telling myself, okay, well, I'll just stop drinking and this stuff's going to go away and I won't have to deal with it. And that's not the case. Um, you know, I'd, I'd let this stuff go. And it ended up developing into like some serious health problems for me later on down the road. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about today, um, which I think is a really important one, is I started to get edema in my legs. And I remember one time specifically that I had the edema. I was on a job site. Uh, this is when I was doing my business. And um, I looked down, and I've talked about this before, but I tend to pull my socks like really up really high, like almost up to my knees. Um, I don't know why, I just feel like if they're kind of hanging down, they just don't feel right. Um, but one day, I was on a job, and uh, I happened to pull my pants leg up for whatever reason, I don't remember why. And when I looked down at my leg, uh, around where the sock, uh, right at the top of the sock, like right underneath my knee, there was a flap of skin uh, that was hanging over the sock like this. And it really threw me off for a second. So I went ahead and pulled the other pants leg up and guess what? The other leg had a whole bunch of fluid in it as well. So both of my legs that day were just full of fluid and they were so full of fluid, like I said, that the, it was like pouring over the top of the sock. And if I pulled the sock down, it left an imprint there and um, you know, I never did anything about it. And it, that day, I remember going home. I didn't do anything. Uh, woke up the next morning, it was gone. So, you know, it was kind of like out of sight, out of mind that day. And <clears throat> it happened to me multiple times after that. And the same thing would happen. Um, I would get it that day. And then I would just kind of be like, okay, I'm, you know, I'll let it just kind of go away overnight. And it usually would. And then it would be gone. And I just didn't think anything about it. Well, after my diagnosis, after I ended up in the hospital, I continued to get edema in my legs for quite some time. Especially during the periods of time when I would get ascites, I would get a lot of water retention in my legs as well. Um, so definitely something, if you're getting uh, uh, that fluid in your legs, be uh, very mindful of that. Um, another thing that I had, uh, I started to develop spider veins on my face. And I talked about this in a recent video. I think it was maybe like a month ago or something. But <clears throat> I was at my brother's house one day. My brother's a nurse. And I was at his house one day. We were uh, actually at his next door neighbor's house uh, swimming in their pool. And this was back when I was still a drinker. And <clears throat> I started getting these uh, blotches. And I still have them on my face still to this day and on my nose. Um, and they're, they're on this side and right, right here. Um, but I went, I was over there one day and my brother happened to mention to me, he said, um, did you know that you're starting to get spider veins on your face? And I said, yeah. And, uh, you know, I thought it was something else, uh, rosacea. Um, but, 
uh, come to find out um, that it, that's due to uh, the liver disease, uh, getting those on your face. And he had told me, he said, you know, that's associated with alcoholism and a lot of alcoholics get those on their faces. And I'd actually seen that on some other people that were really heavy drinkers in the past as well. But once again, something else I just completely blew off and, you know, pretended like it was something else. And I didn't want to face the fact of that I was probably uh, seriously starting to develop some problems. Um, another one of the issues I had too uh, was uh, I was vomiting every single day. Uh, I woke up every morning and threw up. And I would also throw up throughout the day. Um, I was just constantly nauseous and uh, I would just throw up. Um, I would get sick. I remember one day I'd been on a job. Uh, I'd already thrown up that morning and um, I tried to eat something for lunch and ended up throwing up right after that. And this is like right before I ended up in the hospital. Um, but I kept getting sick and I would always blame it on something else. Uh, you know, it was I left this food out for too long or I did this and I ate this wrong or whatever it was. And I was always making these excuses up uh, for the reason that I was in, ending up getting sick. But all along it was because of my alcohol consumption. Um, I had developed pancreatitis multiple times. And now looking back, uh, I don't even know how many times I had pancreatitis, but it was a lot. Um, since I've been diagnosed and looking back on all the times that I ended up getting very ill, uh, one of the first things, and I'm going to do another video um, probably this week and talk about pancreatitis because um, I've had pancreatitis so many times. I have chronic pancreatitis. Um, I, I've, I've been in, in a constant state of pancreatitis at one point for, it was like five months. Um, it's very painful. It makes your back hurt really bad and um, it makes your stomach hurt and your left hand side where your pancreas is at. You can feel this really sharp pain right there and it radiates to your back. It feels like you just, like you hurt your back really bad like lifting something too heavy but it's just like I'm gonna go into it in another video but <clears throat> um, it's, a, it's a very painful feeling in your back um, but I'll talk more about that in another video. Um, I was having a constant pain in my liver um, and this like dull feeling all the time. I could just feel my liver there all the time and it's right uh, on the right hand side uh, right where your rib cage kind of ends where your stomach is just right in that area right there it was just like this um, it, I, I don't know really any way to explain it except that I just felt my liver there it just kind of felt like my liver was poking out all the time I, my liver felt bloated is the best way that I can explain it. And I would get these sharp pains, dull pains, but there was just this constant dull feeling in my liver area all the time. And once again, I never did anything about it. Another thing as well, I would if I laid down in the bed, and you know if you lay down, then your, your abdomen muscles kind of loosen up a little bit. I could push down right there, and it was extremely hard uh, where my liver was. Um, I had diarrhea all the time, and I talked about this in yesterday's video, but uh, just constant diarrhea. I, I, I can't even think of a day when I was a drinker when I didn't have diarrhea, and I, was, I would be in the bathroom for, you know, an hour at a time. Um, I, you know, first thing when I woke up in the morning, I was in the bathroom. Um, I, I didn't drink coffee for a long period of time as well because it would upset my stomach so bad, and I'll be right back in the bathroom. Um, it, it was just constant all the time. Uh, it just never went away. And, uh, you know, now since I've stopped drinking and it's, since my pancreas has kind of settled down a little bit for the time being, it's kind of, it's pretty much gone away. Um, so, you know, another thing that uh, I ignored and didn't pay any attention to, um, I started losing weight um, right before my diagnosis. I'd say about a year up to that point, I started losing weight. <clears throat> and it, I didn't uh, do anything different. I was still drinking. Um, now, I didn't eat a lot of food back then, uh, which I'm going to get into here in just a second. But um, I was doing the same things and starting to lose weight. And it just didn't make any sense to me. And I mean, pant sizes were dropping. Um, and another thing that was happening too is I had absolutely no appetite. I was never hungry. Um, if I ate, I had to force it down. I mean, like, like I seriously had to force the food down. Um, I knew I needed to eat. I just didn't want to eat. I, I was not hungry. Food just was gross to me. And, um, 
you know, like I said, I literally had to force the food down. I remember just like almost choking trying to get it down because I, I knew I hadn't eaten in days and um, <clears throat> I, I didn't quite understand because I would get hungry from time to time. But right before my diagnosis, I just had absolutely no appetite at all. And another thing too, and this is the last thing on my list for today, but I always felt bloated always felt bloated i don't care what i did i just had this bloated feeling in my belly all the time um i used to take gas medicine all the time thinking that might be what it is and um you know thinking that that might help out a little bit uh i would have to go all day long with no food in my stomach to keep that bloated feeling from hurting so bad because it would just feel like it would like like cut off how deeply I could breathe in. I felt so bloated all the time. I don't know if maybe that if I had like ascites that was starting to develop back then. I was rather uh, much uh, a lot bigger back then than I am now. I weighed 250 pounds during that period of time and uh, now I'm like 143 pounds but uh, like I said um, you know I don't know if there was ascites that was starting to set in during that period of time. I'm not really sure what the bloating came from. I would imagine that it came from inflammation uh, you know in my uh, my GI tract from all the alcohol that I was consuming during that time um, but it could have also been you know I started to have some uh, ascites set in. I'm not really sure like I said my belly was pretty large during that period of time and um, even after my diagnosis, when I went to the hospital, I got diagnosed and everything, I still had a lot of bloating during that period of time, which now looking back, that was ascites after I'd gotten out of the hospital. I've got some pictures. My daughter graduated from high school like a week after I got out of the, high, uh, out of the hospital the first time. And um, the, one of the pictures is hanging up in our hallway. And every time I walk past that, I look at myself and I can see how big my belly was during that period of time. Um, I had just gotten out of the hospital and that ascites kind of hung around for the rest of that summer uh, and then it started to go away and then I ended up back in the hospital again in September at the end of the month and then the ascites really set in after that but you know once again I just felt bloated all the time and especially after I ate food the bloating it was horrible and I, I would often not eat just because I felt so bloated all the time I just did not like that feeling you know, bending over to like tie your shoes or uh, putting socks on or something like that was like painful because I just felt so bloated inside. I just felt like I had eaten um, something that gave me really bad gas, but it was like a constant pressure on my stomach all day long. But anyway, that's that's the list for today. And like I said, I just kind of wanted to touch on a couple of these things um, that, you know, I ignored, uh, you know, symptoms I was having that I should have been paying attention to and I just wasn't. I was too afraid to go to the doctor. I didn't want to hear what they had to say. I was, uh, you know, scared they were going to tell me I had to stop drinking or that I had some kind of, um, you know, major health problem because of my alcohol consumption. And you know that's the addictive mind right there you know you've got something seriously wrong and uh, you know I, I'm sitting there for trying to protect uh, my consumption opposed to going to the hospital or the doctor and find out what's going on with me because I knew they were going to tell me I had to stop drinking and I just didn't want to hear it and I guess in my mind I'm thinking out of sight out of mind and it's all good well it, that in, it did not end up well for me because I played that game um, you know I kept pushing it off pushing it off and then ended up getting very, very, very sick. And, um, you know, two, or two years later, I'm still paying the consequences for my actions. And, uh, you know, if you're experiencing any of these kinds of symptoms like this, or, you know, you know one or more of these, uh, definitely please go see your doctor and have them checked out. Now, I'm not a medical professional. I'm not a doctor. <clears throat> you know, I'm not giving you any advice. I'm just saying that, you know, if you are having some problems, um, I would definitely have a doctor check it out uh, because you just don't want it to get to that point where it becomes a lifelong problem. It could be something that could be addressed now and uh, you know you might be able to heal completely from it and you know you learn that okay this happened uh, and maybe it does require that you stop drinking but you know, trust me it's not worth it in the end to let that continue to happen. Just the medical bills and the time that you're going to waste alone um, it's just not worth it. But anyway, guys, that's it for today. I wanted to try to keep today's video at least 15 minutes and we're almost at that time. So 
with that said i will be making a video tomorrow probably another one of my older videos remade um but anyway thank you so much for watching today's video and once again if you have any of these things especially the edema in the legs the pain in the liver if you're experiencing pancreatitis please go see a doctor it, it it, it's so much better to go ahead and, and have it looked at now than wait until it's too late. So, with that said, guys, I love you all so much, and thank you for watching today's video. And until tomorrow, I will see you all then.